Hi, my name is Nathan. I am one of the developers working on the VNAS project for the VATSIM network, and today I'm going to demonstrate VTTLES. VTTLES is a new application that will be released alongside VNAS that simulates the real-world TDLS, or Tower Data Link Service. TDLS is used by FAA controllers to issue PDCs, or pre-departure clearances, to aircraft. VTTLES can be accessed at TTLES.VirtualNAS.NET, which will automatically redirect you to the login page. Here I can select the server that I want to connect to, and click Login with VATSIM. If you haven't logged in with VATSIM in a while, you may have to re-authenticate using VATSIM Connect and your VATSIM CID and VATSIM password. After logging in, I see no TTLES facility is found, and that I am connected to the test server. VTTLES is telling me no TTLES facility is found because I have not yet connected to the VATSIM network through a VNAS client. If I go to CRC, I can connect as Boston Ground to the test server, and VTTLES will almost instantly pick up my connection and display Boston Ground, my position, and 121.9 or my frequency, and then I'm connected to the test server. One of the great features of VTTLES is I don't have to connect using the same computer as my primary controller client. For example, I can connect CRC on my computer and use a laptop or iPad to connect VTTLES. Next I can see a list of facilities that are available for me to work. Because I'm working Boston Ground, I can see that I have access to the Boston TTLES facility. However, if I were working top-down as Boston Center, I would see the Boston TTLES facility as well as other TTLES facilities that I'm working, such as Providence and Albany. I can click a facility to open up TTLES. Across the top of TTLES is the header. Most of the header is not simulated for the purposes of VATSIM. However, we do see the facility ID of the current facility. The facility ID can also be found in the tab alongside the number of aircraft that are requesting clearance. This can be handy if you're working top-down and have multiple VTTLES tabs open. It will allow you to scan through and see which facilities have aircraft that are awaiting clearance. If I click the first facility ID, it will open up the facility menu. This menu can also be opened by pressing the escape key. In the facility menu, I see my position and frequency, and that my session is currently inactive. I'll go to CRC to activate my frequency, which will be displayed in VTTLES. Again, I'm connected using the test server. I'll skip over temporary departure frequencies for now, but note that dark mode can be enabled while this is an unrealistic feature that is not present in the real version of TDLS. TTLES is composed of three lists, the first being the DCL list, which is a list of aircraft that are awaiting clearance. Aircraft appear in the DCL list as soon as a valid flight plan is filed. Note that this also includes pre-files, so you may see aircraft in the DCL list that have not yet connected. You can still send PDCs to these pre-filed aircraft. The pilots will just receive them as soon as they connect. Next is the CPDLC list, which is not currently simulated for VATSIM. Once VATSIM has an official solution for CPDLC, I will implement it in VTTLES and create a new video detailing the process of sending CPDLC clearances. Finally, when aircraft receive a PDC, they will be moved under the PDC list here. Aircraft can be selected by clicking on the aircraft, which will open up the clearance editor window. In the clearance editor, you can see the aircraft's ID, the assigned beacon code, the routing, the estimated time on route in hours and minutes, in this case the pilot did not file any, the aircraft type and equipment code, the proposed departure time, any remarks, the flight plan CID, and the requested altitude in hundreds of feet. Following the flight plan is a series of drop-downs that allow controllers to select the information to be sent with the PDC. The first select is the expect time, in this example, the aircraft should expect their filed altitude of flight level 38010 minutes after departure. 
Next is the departure SID. Because Delta 713 filed a flight plan with a valid departure, the Highland 6 departure was automatically selected by TEETLS. Additionally, some fields can be automatically selected based on the departure. We can see that Climb via SID is also automatically selected, which is appropriate for the Highland 6 departure. This is followed by the transition. In this case, the Highland 6 departure does not have any transitions, so it is left blank. Next is the climb instruction. This could be configured by a facility engineer to assign a particular heading or charted climb procedure. Next is the climb via instruction, in this case climb via SID. And next is the initial altitude, which could be something like maintain 5,000 feet. Next is the contact information for who the aircraft should contact after receiving clearance. Next is the departure frequency. And finally, any local information that facility engineers might configure to send with PDCs. I can change the value that is sent with the PDC by clicking the drop down and selecting a new value. Some fields may be marked as mandatory by the facility engineer. For example, all aircraft departing Boston must receive a SID, so if I change the SID to empty, I can see that mandatory field is not set and the send button is disabled. I'll reselect the Highland 6 departure and I can see the clearance type is back to PDC and send is enabled. If I want to close out of this clearance editor, I can click cancel. Dump allows controllers to permanently remove a flight plan from TEETLs. This is useful if the flight plan is no longer going to be utilized or if the flight is unable to receive a PDC, such as after issuing a voice clearance. However, once you dump an aircraft, there is no way to re-add the aircraft back to TEETLs, so any clearance will have to be given over voice. After I select all the information in the clearance editor, I can click send to send the PDC. The aircraft is removed from the DCL list and now appears under the PDC list. Note that once PDCs are sent, they cannot be resent. However, if a pilot disconnects and reconnects, the PDC will automatically be resent to their pilot client so it is not lost. A PDC also cannot be amended. If a clearance needs to be amended, a controller must do so over voice. I can click the aircraft to view the clearance that was sent, and notice that the drop downs now only contain the option that was selected and sent to the aircraft. From a pilot's perspective, they will receive a private message from ACARS detailing their flight plan information as well as the clearance that we selected using the drop downs. We can see this clearance, cleared Highland 6 departure, climb via SID, matches the drop downs that we selected here. Island 6 departure and climb via SID. After selecting Delta 713 in the PDC list, the PDC list becomes active. If I want to change back to the DCL list, I can use the tab key. If I keep pressing the tab key, it will cycle through the lists, and I can press the back tick key, usually found right above tab, to cycle backwards through the lists. After selecting a list, the first aircraft in the list will become highlighted. To highlight the next aircraft, press the arrow down key. And to highlight the previous aircraft, press the arrow up key. To open the clearance editor for the aircraft that is currently selected, press enter. And to close the clearance editor, press F10. Inside the clearance editor, I can also use the tab key to cycle through the fields. Once I select a field that needs to be changed, I can press enter and then use arrow keys up and down to choose the value. Again, pressing enter to select the new value. Let's talk about those temporary departure frequencies. Sometimes it might be necessary to input a departure frequency that is not found in the departure frequency list configured by the facility engineer. This could be due to a controller working top down or an unusual split during an event. In this case, go back to the facility menu and input the temporary departure frequency. 
Now, opening the departure frequency dropdown, we can see the temporary departure frequency is available to send to the aircraft. This temporary departure frequency will not be available next time you open up BTLs and will have to be re-added if you need to use it again. Let's demonstrate dumping an aircraft. We can press the F4 key or click dump to dump this aircraft and remove it from TDLS. The F10 key can be used to close out of the flight plan editor and the F12 key can be used to send a PDC. One final key command that is quite useful is Control alt right arrow or left arrow to cycle through the list of available facilities. Because I'm working Boston ground, I cannot cycle through any additional facilities. However, if you want to use only one tab of VTLs, you can quickly cycle through facilities using this key command. Again, Control alt right arrow or Control alt left arrow. Aircraft will remain in the PDC list until their flight plan is activated. This usually happens upon departure. I'm going to taxi Delta 713 out for departure and we can see this happen. Now that Delta 713 is airborne and the flight plan has been activated, we can see that he is removed from the PDC list. This concludes this demonstration of VTLs. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the VNAS Discord. I will post a link in the description below.